Hi, my name is Kim and I'm with the Volusia County Public Library. Would you like to learn more about your ancestors from the comfort of your own home? If so, Heritage Quest Online is a great place to search for U.S. records. All you need to get started is a library card. Start with our homepage, volusialibrary.org. From there, hover over Digital Library with the mouse. Then go to Research Databases and click on Databases A to Z. Start typing the word Heritage into the keyword search box. The image for Heritage Quest will show up just below the one for Ancestry and you can click on the image or the link. Type your whole library card number with no spaces in the username box. Ignore the password box and just click on Sign In. Click on the link for remote access. Now you're ready to search. There are three main categories at the top with additional categories below. Let's start with maps. These maps show county boundaries in census years for all states through 1920. The U.S. Census is done every 10 years in years ending in a zero. You can click on any state to see the maps. Here is a map of Florida in 1830, which was the first year a map was available for our state. The county borders for 1830 are in black, with the current borders in white. You can see that Volusia County, which used to be called Mosquito County, encompassed most of central Florida. Checking maps for later years will show how the boundaries have changed. Looking at the areas where your ancestor lived can help you search for records in the right place. Often, if a border changed, records stayed in the original county. Next, we have research aids. Research aids are short articles with helpful information on certain topics. There are articles to help you get started, as well as articles on other topics like African American research and black sheep in the family. Here's an article called Ancestry Anne's Top 10 Search Tips. Reading this two-page article might help you get better search results. You'll see references to Ancestry.com in the article. Ancestry owns Heritage Quest, so the layout of the page and the way you search are the same for both databases. The main portion of this database is found by clicking on the search button. From here there are several options, but I like to start with the census. By finding your ancestors in the census, you can find out where they were living and who they were living with in 10-year increments. Once you have that information, you can search for other life events such as marriage and death. When starting your research or searching for a new person, you have to start with what you know and work back from there. That way, there is a better chance of finding the right person and not someone else with the same name. The most recent census available at this time is 1940. I wasn't around in 1940, but of course I have relatives who were, so I can click on the link for the 1940 census to start searching for someone in my family. This will hopefully lead me to other relatives. When the search box comes up, I can search for my great-grandfather. I'll add what I know about him in the appropriate boxes. Filling in all of the information isn't necessary, but approximate birth year and location, even if it's just a state, will help. Once I have entered the information I want, I'll click on Search. 
There were a lot of men named George Miller living in New Jersey in 1940. Entering a location helped because he's the first one listed. If the results I get don't seem relevant, I can adjust the slider bars on the left to narrow or expand my results. Once I have them the way I want them, I'll click on Update. I can also click on Edit Search to add or subtract information, and then click on Search again. When I find the right family, I'll click on View Record. In the center of the page is a summary of the information on the census form, including the names of other people who live in the home. Notice that for George, the birth year is listed as about 1880. That's because the census enumerators usually asked how old a person was, not when they were born. He may or may not have had his birthday yet that year. On the right, there is a link to email the record to myself or someone else. I'll enter the same email address in both boxes and click on Send Document. There is also a printer-friendly view. If I click on Print, the page will reformat and I can print it. At the top left of the page I started with is an image of the original census and I can click on that to view it. I can also save, print, or download the image by clicking on the Tools button, which is the crossed hammer and wrench. I always want to look at the original image because there is more information than what's on the transcript. Also, there might be a transcription error on the typed version that I can catch by looking at the original. Another bonus is that by looking at neighbors on the same or a nearby street, I might find some additional relatives. When looking at the image, the person for whom I have searched is highlighted in yellow. Other members of the household are listed in green, at least on more modern censuses. Pay close attention to people in the household whose names are different. Even if someone is listed as a boarder, they could very well be related. When I have the information I want from 1940, I can go back to search for him in 1930. There are many other collections to look at in Heritage Quest. If I click on Home, I'll go back to the first screen with several other places to look for ancestors. There is quite a lot of information to be found here, so take some time to explore. Thanks for watching. Please visit us online at volusialibrary.org and like us on Facebook.